In previous videos I've covered cleaning the mixer channels on the Tascam 244, Q amplifier, pitch control and we've looked extensively at refurbishing the transport. It's probably a good thing overall to completely tear this down and clean everything. Um, the last place where there's kind of moving parts and crevices where a lot of dust can accumulate is the record and playback amplifiers. That's these ones here, so this board here is for playback and this one here is for recording. In here we have the auxiliary master control, we have the bass master control which also controls our headphone now, and the master feeders buried in there as well. Now as much as it's a good thing that these four channels are on separate printed circuit boards, because, um, you know, if we've only got a problem with one channel, then we can just hoik that out. And if we've got a donor machine, we can put in a new one. It's also kind of a pig to get these two out. One of the most kind of complex things you'll do working on Tascam Porter Studios in terms of the number of plugs that you need to unplug and the difficulty with which you'll have in getting some of these screws back in place. Let's go through this. So we have two plugs here. The top one of those, which has red shielding, is the record and playback head. We can just pry that away with a flathead screwdriver. And then one below it with black shielding is a raise. The decode and encode cables from the DBX board here. They eventually connect to the record and playback boards. You can get those plugs open with a flathead screwdriver or a plectrum or something. Um, I'm fairly confident of how much pressure I can put on these at this stage, so I would just pull them out the way I just did there. Of these plugs along here, this one, this one, this one, and this one. That one there, that's a connection between these two control boards. It's part of the logic circuit that controls the transport. And, but all these other ones are sending signals or receiving signals from the record and playback boards in terms of how our play, record, pause, etc, etc buttons control the functions here. Technically speaking, this connection up here, that's the decode side of the DBX board. So this is like playback from tape. You can see the way that it's usually tied up. It's bunched in all together with these leads here, so... In order to hook this out, then we do need to pull that out of the Q board there. This cable here joins to our headphone socket down here, so we need that out of the way. Up here at the top, we discussed before that this long one is for the meters. This comes out. You may have to cut a few cable ties here, just be careful you don't cut the cables themselves. Also this one here is situated between a red plug with four cables in it and a white plug with two cables in it. This red and white one here, that's the auxiliary return. One more cable here. And we need to unplug these two at the top. These two here. This little red one down here. If you haven't already removed the DVX board, then that needs to come out like so. This is so, this red and white cable here, which is the master fader joining between the fader that's buried deep in here and the uh, playback and power board up here. That allows that to come free. I believe that's it. Oh, hang on, I've forgotten one cable and that's... This one here, that actually runs underneath a bunch of cables here. So I'm looping them under and over, but you could actually pull uh, the connections between channels 3 and 4 out of this board. Let's see if I remember any more after I unscrew this. So you're going to have one 
long brass post here. That's got a plastic sleeve on it. And then there's another one usually about here. It's not present in this one because in this one uh, the post on the front plastic face into which it screws is broken. So that's already been removed. And then the third place that there's a screw is right at the bottom of the record board here. If you've still got your master fader on, that's going to need to come off. The other knobs can remain on. And at that point, you should be able to lift that out. That's not to say it's going to be easy. Oh yeah, one more I've forgotten, and that's these two cables here that plug into the far left side of the Q amplifier. So when you use the Q switch at the top of this, you know, this into Q mode there, then the signal that you're listening to in your headphones is coming from this purple and brown cable here. So, you can see there's a lot of cables associated with this. And that's it only partly disassembled. Because if you want to get in here, then you can see that there's a shielding around the record board here. This shielding plate. And you can also see there's one, two, three plastic spacers separating the shielding from the board itself. Uh, I suggest that that is harder to reassemble than taking out one, two screws here and I think one, two screws. Basically the base of these switches here. I'd say that's a slightly easier way to get in here and then we can access these two pots and this fader for the purpose of cleaning. We've got the playback board. I'm going to remove these two screws. And additionally, we've got screws here. We need to remove them. They're attached to the base of these two switches. Um, there's a plastic spacer between each one, so you want to do this on top of a towel or something so you can catch those spacers when you take this part. There's one of them, and there's the other. So, at this point, We've got a mess of wires, but we have got access to the bus headphone pot here and to the auxiliary master pot here for cleaning. We've still got a couple of steps in order to get the uh, master fader out. So there's some shielding around it. Loosen the screw here. And then we have two screws in the front to detach that fader. Then with a little persuasion, this fader will come out of there. And you can see it's actually not really electrically attached to either of these boards in any way. Um, it's just mounted to the same metal plate. And you can see that no soldering is required to open that up and clean inside. I have already done a couple of videos about prying open faders and cleaning them. Doing the same with this is pretty straightforward. It's just that when you're inside here, instead of having two carbon strips and one pair of brushes, you've got four carbon strips and two pairs of brushes attached to the plastic base of this guy. It's uh, The construction's otherwise very similar. And you would clean it in the same way, you know, pry it open, get in there, clean everything, close it shut, making sure it's not too tight. But that's how you would remove it in order to clean it. Similarly, we now have access to these. You'd put contact cleaner into here, blow it out with compressed air after moving the pots a little bit to kind of agitate and disturb any dirt or muck accumulated in the cavity of those. 
once you've done that, put some kind of electrical lubricant in there, give it a wiggle again, and then you can reset assemble it in that. In most cases, unless you've got a serious electrical problem, and that's going to resolve any issues you've got with crackles and cutouts on these two pots and this fader.